Breath of the Wild has been an outstanding success, critically acclaimed and adored by its fans, with many of the opinion that it is one of, if not THE, greatest Zelda games to date. Hundreds of hours can be spent combing the impeccably crafted landscape from the sandy wastelands of the Gerudo Desert to the fiery infernos of Death Mountain, yet fans still clamour for more. We were graced with our first look at the Breath of the Wild sequel during E3 2019, so let's speculate as to what we could possibly expect from the sequel to one of the greatest games of all time. Calamity Ganon wreaked havoc over Hyrule for the last 100 years. However, he actually spans a time period of over 10,000 years according to stories told within Breath of the Wild. When a defeated Link awoke from a 100 year slumber in the shrine built for resurrection, he had the mission of defeating Calamity Ganon once and for all, with the help of the divine beasts and the spirit of the defeated champions that reside within them. Hyrule Castle was swirling with evil malice as Princess Zelda held back the calamity until the day that Link gained enough of his strength back to tackle Hyrule's scourge. With memories of a past pieced together, the legendary sword of evil's bane retrieved and four divine beasts reactivated, Link found himself at the footsteps of a wrecked Hyrule Castle. After a battle with the malice-altered, spider-like Calamity Ganon, Link and Zelda then teamed up to fight a beast of pure evil, a swirling, everlasting hatred in the form of the Dark Beast Ganon. After victory, the lands of Hyrule seemed safe, once and for all. That is, until E3 2019. It can be taken as a given now that the mummified body that was seen in the trailer is Ganondorf, the humanoid containment of Demise's curse that has lived and reincarnated through the ages. So was Calamity Ganon defeated? We can theorise that Link was indeed successful. However, Calamity Ganon may have just been a manifestation of malice that had tormented the land. Spilled out of an open wound on Ganondorf's remains, it had spread and grown all over Hyrule, reviving monsters and creating new ones in the form of the Blight Ganons that inhabited the Divine Beasts. As Link entered Hyrule Castle, we saw Calamity Ganon hatch from a cocoon that was swirling with malice and infused with a trapped guardian that resided above it. Wearing the face of the Gerudo King Ganondorf himself, this monstrosity took the form of its creator, the evil King of Thieves. As with Calamity Ganon, Dark Beast Ganon was created out of malice and the hatred that flows through the bloodline of Ganondorf. Mere puppets created out of an ancient curse, Demise's curse, reliving and reincarnating itself. Without theorising too much on the overarching timeline of the Legend of Zelda franchise, it is easy to assume that Breath of the Wild fits in towards the end of all timelines. In fact, it slips in most easily at the end of the Fallen Hero timeline, not only because of a few lines of dialogue from Princess Zelda, but because the Castle Town and Hyrule Castle are extremely similar to the ones found in Twilight Princess. The slumped over corpse of Ganondorf is also very reminiscent of the incarnation that we saw from Twilight Princess. From long, flowing red hair worn over an intricate golden piece of head jewellery centred with an impressive gem, flowing black robes embroidered with the symbolism of the Gerudo tribe right down to the wound inflicted by the sages who tried to execute Ganondorf before banishing him to the Twilight Realm. Even after the final blow that sealed Ganondorf in Twilight Princess, it seems that he was never fully defeated. Sealed under Hyrule Castle, his corpse mummified to prevent reincarnation from ever happening again, only for the wound to open and give birth to malice that caused a new catastrophe within the vast lands of Hyrule. We can't say for sure that this is definitely the same Ganondorf, but there are far too many minor details that seem keen to point us in that direction. One of the only things that doesn't quite line up is the paintings on the walls in the crypt. 
they show a horse riding Ganondorf holding a trident, whereas the Ganondorf in Twilight Princess wielded the Sword of the Sages. However, we do not know much about Ganondorf before the Sages tried to execute him. The Warlock could be of a time when he committed his crimes before the Sages tried to execute him. Either way, there's clearly plenty of unanswered questions about the identity of this mummified Ganondorf. What is his relation to Calamity Ganon? And what role he'll play in the upcoming sequel? We cannot wait to find out more. And if you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe and ring the notification bell, as we will be theorising on the new Zelda a lot more in the future. I'm Gary from Nintendo Village, and thank you for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, check out some of our other videos, and visit the NintendoVillage.com, your home for everything Nintendo.